My name is Dylan L. Rothbine. I am Asperger's dyslexic, blind, paralyzed, epileptic, and I have male to female gender dysphoria, making me a male to female transsexual. It's time to inform you of a disastrous discovery of the state of my nervous system, which has, which has repercussions for me and people of all ages in and out of the trans community. Upon careful investigation, it appears I've been injured by Lupron. This is not to say I am a lawyer, and it says nothing about my gender dysphoria. I am still a transsexual. I have read many texts on the law, and I have a BA in history, although I definitely do have Lyme disease. It has become clear to me that I've become injured by taking Lupron in ways that are life-changing and potentially deadly. However, it is a dark reminder on the power of the pharmaceutical interest, industry in our lives and is not a judgment on any one person. My name is Margo. I am a biology student. I am not a medical professional, but I have been trained to read scientific studies for many years. Lupron is a hormone blocking medication that is used to treat gender dysphoria, cancers, and precocious puberty in children. Lupron is an artificial version of a hormone that is released by the hypothalamus in the brain to control other hormones. The hypothalamus is a small part of the brain that controls hormones, emotions, and basic, and basic functions of the nervous system such as temperature, and sleep cycles. When it comes to the legacy of Lupron and the LGBT community, it is a mixed bag. Lupron is used as a testosterone blocker as a treatment for male to female gender dysphoria. Usually, Lupron is considered the blocker of choice for minors who are transitioning and is the most widely used hormone blocker. In the beginning of my transition, I also took Lupron at age 23. That's in my physical inability to swallow pills. This is why I was given Lupron as a hormone blocker, even though I was an adult, because at the time I had no way of accessing spironolactone. After I started taking Lupron, I was on and off of the medication for three years because the disability establishment didn't care about my hormone health. My LGBT doctors ignored that I was autistic and bipolar. The side effects of Lupron include mood changes, seizures, uh, eh, eh. Yeah, that's why your eyes were getting so big. brain fog, bone pain, dizziness, fainting. I feel like I'm going in and out of consciousness. Fluid on the brain, brain swelling, dis decreased testicle size, paralysis and stroke-like symptoms. Fatigue, hot flashes, decreased libido, constipation, blurry vision, reduced vision, liver damage, paralysis of eye muscles, muscle pain, neuropathy, urinary tract problems, muscle wasting, skin changes, difficulty swallowing, heart problems, lung and lung problems. The side effects involving the nervous system happen because the parts of the brain, because certain parts of the brain are so interconnected that when you introduce an artificial chemical into the brain, it can cause an imbalance in the chemical and nerve signals in the brain. This can stop some signals from being sent from the brain, reaching the parts of the body where it is needed. The side effects in other parts of the body, like the liver, have to do with how the body digests and absorbs the medication. Autistic people and people with seizures are generally not advised to take Lupron. When it comes to the side effects, I was only aware of some of the side effects. 
and the information was skewed based upon what the trans community wanted me to know. I was told by the trans community I would have hot flashes and night sweats. And it was a good thing because I would experience what a woman feels in menopause. I was made aware of some limited mood shifts while I was on Lupron. It was portrayed as me experiencing what a woman feels on a period. I was informed my sex drive would go down. According to professionals, women have a lower sexual drive. So I would experience the libido of a biological woman. I knew my testicles would shrink. I knew I would become infertile. It is possible they tried to tell me more about the side effects. I did my own research on estrogen and Lupron, but I could not read any of the documents. I was signing. When I told the clinics I, I was autistic and severely dyslexic, I was dismissed. I didn't know until a year after I stopped taking Lupron, stopped taking Lupron that I was experiencing side effects. When I was in Texas, I was no longer able to obtain Lupron, and I was not told why. The drug had likely been stopped in Texas. The doctors didn't know what to do with me, so I simply took estrogen without any blockers. Upon looking at the timeline, I realized it seemed peculiar that I had chronic pain, both legs, intense seizures, and eventually paralysis and blindness. This does not discount the fact that I have Lyme disease. Lupron is similar to chemical messages sent by the brain. In between each brain cell, there is a small space called a synapse where chemical messages are sent between neurons. If these chemical messages are disrupted, a message is not sent and the brain cell malfunctions and the parts of the body controlled by that area of the brain also lose function. Unfortunately, chemical message cannot be seen on certain brain scans, so brains can look quote-unquote normal structurally, but still be damaged. This is why mental health conditions having to do with chemical messages generally won't show up on these certain types of scans either. When I brought up the Lyme disease, I was told it was all in my head due to my brain issues not showing up on the majority of my tests. I was told I had functional movement disorder. My therapist at the time knew I was taking new pun and denied I had PTSD and misdiagnosed me as having major depressive disorder and a bipolar disorder. I would hope this evidence is compelling to you. There was clearly medical negligence, which left me with cement in my brain, resulting in a kind of TBI and spinal cord injury, which has left me permanently a wheelchair user. I have an official documentation from an eye doctor saying my optic nerve shrunk. And if I really had functional movement disorder, it would not show up on any tests at all. Functional movement disorder does not cause the level of 2,500 blindness that I have. When I try to bring up my eye scan to other neurologists, I get completely ignored. The parts of the brain that control chemical signals can get damaged, just like physical neurons can. I have cerebral palsy, which is a type of brain damage that occurs at birth and can be seen on MRI scans. But some cases of cerebral palsy do not even show up on scans. And there are people that can get exposed to certain things around them like drugs or alcohol that can damage the chemical parts of the brain too. An example of a disability that is caused by damage to chemical signals is fetal alcohol syndrome, which in milder cases can go undetected or misdiagnosed as learning disabilities. Medications can be specifically designed to act on chemical signals in the brain like medications for ADHD, such as artificial dopamine. SSRIs are artificial serotonin and norepinephrine. Hormones can be made artificially as well, like estrogen for gender dysphoria or insulin for diabetics. 
which is made from a special kind of sterile bacteria. I don't believe Dylan has functional movement disorder because every time a doctor bothers to look deep enough, signs of neurological damage do show up on her test results, like when a physical therapist felt her legs and knew her neurological function had been lost. Another physical therapist found that Dylan has clonus, which is a physical involuntary sign of neurological dysfunctions and spasticity. The neurologist who suggested functional movement disorder did not even see Dylan in person. He saw Dylan on a Zoom call. One of the nasty side effects of Lupron is that it can cause changes to the bones in the spine because it makes the bones weaker. As the bones get weaker, they can break inadvertently damaging parts of the spine by pressing on the spinal cord, causing paralysis. One of Dylan's spine scans shows bulging spinal discs, which is known to cause severe chronic pain and trouble moving. Dylan has never been x-rayed since the start of these new impairments, but the circumstantial evidence is compelling, and I want Dylan's spine x-rayed to make sure. My hope going forward is that I can seek justice for my injuries. I am still transitioning, but Lupron is a bad drug. I hope I have made my case. Regardless, there is no treatment for what I have, but there is hope that through adaptive technology, I can live a fruitful life, and I will keep you updated. I hope people think twice about taking this drug because it's simply a bad drug. I will keep you updated as the case evolves.